Scott, well, actors often start with interesting professions. Now, you were a newspaper reporter for a while, mm -hmm. and you wrote obituaries. And one time, you wrote an obituary that got you into a lot of trouble. Yeah, I did. And what happened there? Well, you know, um, I was a, a, a working on a newspaper in Wisconsin. It was right across the border from Illinois. And for, for, for better or for worse, there were a number of uh, organized crime killings that happened in and around the town when I was working there. And when, when people died violent deaths, very often when you got their bio, it didn't mention it. So I was, given, I was working on the obit desk. Bio came in front of me, you know, Mr. So-and-so, born such and such. Did. So I wrote, I assumed that, that, that he died in you know, some violent way they didn't want to mention. So when, you, when that happened, you would always say, as I did in this case, Mr. So-and-so, uh, who was born such and such, passed away yesterday, the victim of a sudden illness. And I wrote the obit, and it turned out it was actually a bio for the, for the business page. The guy called me up the next day, and uh, actually he, he, w he thanked me. He said N not many people get a chance to read their own obituary before they die. You were in one of my favorite films, The Right Stuff. Now that seems to be a movie a lot of people would have killed to be in. Mm -hmm. But you were offered the choice of playing, is that correct, any one of the astronauts? Phil didn't promise me that I would get to do it, but he said, here, read the script, pick your part. See, and, and, and he assumed that I was going to, he thought that I was going to say uh, Jaeger. He assumed that that, and, and he was kind of shocked and bothered when I told him I wanted to be, I wanted to be Shepard, Sam Shepard, I mean, I mean, Alan Shepard, rather, simply because Alan Shepard was sort of the comedic part in the, in the thing. And I told him that's the reason I want to do it. And he finally, you know, got around to seeing it my way, <laughs> let me play the part. Now you're known for your, your level of preparation. For that film, you went out and got a Corvette? Yeah, I, I, looked at, I looked at thousands of feet of home movies and videotape and anything I could get on Alan Shepard. And I went to Moffett Field and talked to guys who'd been in the night fighter squadron with him. And I did everything except talk to him himself, and I intentionally didn't do that. Okay. Now, what's the story with the, the Naval Academy ring? Now, I understand that you wanted to have a Naval Academy ring. I did. And uh, one of the people in the production office whose job it was to supply those kinds of things kept coming up with pieces of junk from the 5 and 10, and I finally had to explain to him rather strongly that wh I wanted a real 1947 Annapolis graduation ring, simply because Alan Shepard made sure that he got that ring in any picture of him that was ever taken, whether it was a Life magazine photograph or what, what not. And I wanted, to, I wanted to have the same ring. And uh, so I, you know, I, I, you know, went through a few. Made your point. <laughs> yeah, a little temperamental scenes and wound up with it. Speaking about Urban Cowboy, now you played a particularly bad person in that movie. Now I've often wondered about the reactions you get, uh, actors get from people in the street. Now what kind of adverse reactions did you get from some people? As bizarre as it sounds, I didn't get any. Um, for some strange reason, as dark and as bad as that character was, both men and women seem to have some kind of uh, attraction for him. And I think that the reason that that character had that reaction on people was simply because I was in a movie that was basically about people who were living kind of surrogate lives. They weren't really cowboys, they were oil workers, they didn't go to the great out, outdoor spaces, they went to the great inner spaces, they didn't ride real bulls, they rode in bull machines. And into this setting walks a guy who's a real bank robber, a real cowboy, a real bull rider. He's, he's, he's the reality of the image that all these other people are sort of playing at. And that, and that kind of a character, good or bad, has to jump off the screen at you. Uh, so speaking about westerns, another movie that I liked was uh, Silverado. Now, it didn't seem to get, with all the high-powered talent in that movie, it didn't seem to get as much uh, box office success as some people would have expected. What was your reaction to that? Well, I, 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 w without pointing the finger at anyone in particular, I think it was badly promoted. It was a period of time when Columbia Films was in transition. They were taken over by Coca-Cola. The, the advertising account was given to a couple of people in New York who had never worked on a film before, and it, was, it just wasn't sold well. Uh, you know, I, I, it obviously wasn't the film because it's since gone on to be one of the highest uh, sales and rental videos of all time. 
So it, it's, it's, it, ultimately, it's made money and done well, but it, when it originally opened, it just was, I mean, uh, there was a lot of money spent on big openings here in Los Angeles, and yet there was no print ads in places like Omaha. It just, I just think that the people who were promoting it didn't uh, understand what, what its audience was or how to get it out to that audience. Some people in the theater last night were saying that they think you're playing yourself in this movie, kind of a stoic, firm individual. Do you, uh, do you like those comparisons? Every, every uh, part I've ever done, I play myself. I've, I'm all I've got to work with. So yeah, there's a lot of me in HD, and there's a bit of me in the character I play in Silence of the Lambs, and there's a lot of me in, in Urban Cowboy, and, and any movie I've ever done. There's just di different aspects. I think with this movie, that what I'm dealing with is not only um, personal, but it goes beyond that. I think that one of the things that attracted me to this character is he has to deal with some things that we all have to deal with. Like when someone in your family gets old and unable to take care of themselves, do you put them in a home or do you do it yourself? Let me sneak in one really quick question there. Uh, what kind of mementos do you keep from movies over the years? Oh, I usually keep pieces of, of wardrobe, you know, hats, boots, shirts, holsters, props, stuff like that. And I've got a, a room full of that junk at home.